Welcome to our T3 OPX VF280 feeder tutorial. Today, you'll learn how to set up and operate the VF280 feeder in conjunction with the T3 OPX. When you first get the feeder, you'll find a manual inside the cabinet. To open the cabinet, on the side you're going to push up and then twist and then bring the handle down. Here, you'll find the user manual. Now, let's put the cabinet back. Push up, and then twist, and then bring the handle down. The feeder comes with a power cable and a communication cable to the printer. Currently, the T3 OPX does not support starting the feeder with the communication cable. It's important to remember to keep a bit of space between the table and the feeder to make sure that no damage is done to the belts. Keep a little bit of space, as you can see here. Now, plug in the cable. You can adjust the height of the VF280 feeder using the four screws found inside of the cabinet here. You can loosen them and turn them to raise to the desired level. Once you're at the desired level, Lock them in place. The knockdown separator pictured here is responsible for allowing media to slide through the feeder. The blue separator wheel is a hard material that provides less friction. It's ideal for multi-thickness media, things that are delicate or easy to damage, products like bags, boxes, and multi-fold envelopes. The black side of the wheel is softer and will provide more separation. This is ideal for objects that are dense and cause more friction between the pieces like cardstock or envelopes. Now we'll show you how to switch between the blue and the black side of the wheel. In order to switch between the wheels, we need a 3 16 Allen wrench. And you'll have to loosen it on the side here. We want to make sure that only one side is touching the material and that you don't have two halves touching them. Now once we do that, you can lock it in place and ensure that it doesn't move. These are the exit rollers. They're spring-loaded. Essentially, they help the media exit and they're adjustable. You can adjust the position of the exit rollers using a 3 and 30 second Allen wrench. Bring the knockdown separator all the way up. So we're going to turn this clockwise. Now we'll show you how you place the material under the wheel. To adjust the separator wheel, we want to bring the media in. And you'll turn the knob to lower or raise the knockdown separator. We want to bring this down enough so that when we pull the media back and forward, we have a little bit of resistance. Take a look here. You can see that the knockdown separator is pushing down on the media just slightly, making a small depression. Take a look at the side guides. These are adjustable by turning the thumb screws. You want to adjust the side guides so they're barely touching the media. And you want a small gap between the media and the guide before you lock it in. You can also change the levels of the side guides. Here, if you adjust these, you can loosen them. There's two screws. You can move them down into a lower position. Once we do that, our side guides will actually touch the table here. And this will be useful for media that's very thin. Certain types of envelopes, we might use this because they'll slide to the side. Otherwise, you should keep this at the current level. The first step is to determine which way we want to print. Once you decide which way you want to print on your media, you'll want to make sure that the boxes or whatever type of material you're using fits nicely between the side guides so that the center is even with the knockdown separator. Once you're done with that, tighten the side guides and make sure they're not pressing too firmly against your media. We want a small gap 
so it touches, but not so it puts a lot of pressure on the material. Perfect. Now let's adjust the separator wheel. So we're going to turn this clockwise. We want to slide this over so the media is right in line with the edge. Take a close look here. You can see that the cardboard box is just in line with the knockdown separator. Now you can proceed from here. Turn the thumb screw counterclockwise and we're going to push it just so there's a bit of an indent, a small amount of pressure on your material. We want to be able to move the material in and out by hand. The material should move in and out with a little bit of resistance. You may have to adjust this once you're doing your first test run. Now for the exposure table, we want to loosen up these two screws here and we'll go ahead and lift it from the back and push it forward to about the halfway point of the media. So if you look at this, the way it's sitting right here, this would probably be the halfway point. Now our final step is going to be the wedge. Align this so that it's in line with the knockdown separator right in the center. And we want to put the rest of our media in at this point. You'll see that the wedge slightly lifts up the media. The first piece of material on the very bottom is set forward a little bit and the rest of the media is stacked on top of each other. Now you want to push in the wedge so the media is just touching the back. Now lock it in place using the thumb screw. Let's take a look at using the wedge when we're using paper bags instead of cardboard boxes. The process differs very slightly. You can feed bags the same way that we did the cardboard earlier in the video. The only difference is that you want to use this little guide in the corner where the handle meets the bag. So when the bags feed down, they can push against the side hold and they won't skew during their entry into the T3 OPX table during the feeding process. If you're using a smaller media, you'll want the exposure table very close to the side guides. Now lock it in position. Perfect. Ensure that the exposure table does not touch the side of the edge guides. The last step is to adjust our exit rulers. Now we're going to loosen this slider closest to the edge of the media. We wanted to widen the exit rollers here, so the cardboard boxes come out fairly uniform. And we're going to move our entry rollers to a wider position. Make sure that your entry rollers are seated on the belts of the T3 OPX table. Take a look at the VF280 control panel. The first knob is to power the feeder. Turn it on. Then we have the vacuum. The vacuum creates a suction that holds your media down to the VF280 feeder. This is very useful when your media is lighter because it will create a suction between the media and the feeder. Then we have the stop button, the jog button, which allows the feeder to move forward while you're holding the jog button. Then we have the start button that turns it fully operational. And of course we have the feeder speed knob. You'll probably want to set the knob to level 2, 3, or 4. Make sure that you're using the same speed as the T3 OPX table. Now let's test it out. Turn the feeder on and engage the vacuum. Make sure that the T3 OPX table is running and you can test feeding the media with the T3 OPX print engine raised. Make sure that it feeds through uniformly. Make sure to calibrate the height of your media using the T3 OPX touchscreen. Now you know how to set up and operate the VF280 feeder. Here's a demonstration of us printing on paper bags. Here's a printing demonstration of us using white paper envelopes. 
For the white paper envelopes, we're going to use the black side of the knockdown separator. This will provide a bit more friction, which will hold the envelopes in place rather than letting them slide through as fast as some of our other material. This is a demonstration of us printing on large cardboard boxes. And that's it! Now you know how to set up and operate the VF280 feeder with the T3 OPX. If you have any additional questions, please contact tech support at astronovaproductid.com. Thanks and have a great day.